Hello, this is Brian, and today we are doing the identification of cations in solution. Cobalt 2 plus, copper 2 plus, nickel 2 plus. So I've already opened the uh, virtual chem lab, going over here to descriptive chemistry, and uh, we'll click on ours, the one we want, and it will open up the lab. I'm going to drag a test tube over to our metal test tube stand, and as you see, that activates everything. I'm going to put in our ions, cobalt, copper, where's nickel, nickel. You can see over here that it tells us cobalt, copper, nickel, what's in the test tube. Now, I'm going to hit the, uh, the divide, to, which essentially duplicates what we've got in our test tube, just uh, in case we make any errors, we'll have this as a reserve. If you haven't gone through a qualitative analysis experiment on Beyond Labs before, I want to quickly go over a few things with you that the worksheet doesn't mention explicitly, which is all of these uh, devices and functions down at the bottom. Notice if you drag the test tube over to the rack, these things don't work. This thing has to be in the metal test tube stand for these things to work. This is the centrifuge. Uh, you just have to click on it for it to work. It actually just spun this. You don't see anything because there, there's no precipitate there. There's a flame. You can click on that for a flame test on it. I'm not clicking on it now. Flame test with the cobalt glass in the way. Decant. If you have a precipitate in there, you can decant the supernatant off the top. Divide, we already did that. Hot plate, the um, or heaters, they call it. You just click on it, and it automatically heats. I'm not going to click now, but if I click on it, it'll appear right there, and it'll heat your solution instantly. This is uh, does the pH of the solution. So you can see the uh, pH paper appears above the test tube. This does the pH vapor of the solution. And this is for sniffing. Odor key over here, pH key over here. This is for stirring. So read number three in your worksheet about the solubility rules, how to identify your cations. Uh, there are different ways to do it. I'm gonna do uh, one way. I'm gonna try to demonstrate which ions are in the solution. Uh, now this is a known solution, but later you'll do these tests with an unknown solution. And note that since it's known, it's in the test tube rack, uh, on the screen here, you get the close-up, and it tells you what's in there. If this were an unknown solution, it would not tell you what's in there. Okay, let's try some tests out. Uh, I'm going to add some uh, ammonia. You can see a little dropper appears there where the mouse is, and that automatically, when you click on it, adds it. I'm going to also add some sodium hydroxide. Where's the sodium hydroxide? Right there. Now, you can see we've got precipitate forming in the solution. In fact, it even tells us what's going on there. Uh, from, from the solubility rules, you know uh, that cobalt and uh, nickel will precipitate out under these conditions. I'm going to centrifuge it. Look, instantly spins down. We have a blue solution left. I'm going to click the decant. And after a moment, the decanted supernatant appears right here. And I hold, uh, if I hold the um, mouse over it, the mouse pointer, we can see over on the left side what's in there. Uh, on the close-up screen, we have a copper ion. That's that. The sign of that is the deep blue color. We also have the other, some other free ions that we added to it, ammonia and sodium. Over here, you see that uh, after we decanted, it left the precipitate behind and added water to it. I'm going to try to demonstrate what's in the precipitate by separating out the two remaining ions. So first I'll heat, and it incidentally heats it. I'll take that heat away. Now I'm going to add some nitric acid to the precipitate. 
and I'll spin it and decant. You can see over here the, uh, the solution, the supernatant, is this green color, a characteristic sign of nickel. In this case, we can test that out further. We can uh, do a test on this. I'm going to move this over here for a minute and put this green solution that we know is nickel, but if we didn't know it, if this were an unknown, we could do a test on it. We can uh, bring it to up to pH 10 to 14. Let's see. So I just clicked on the uh, pH 10 and it brought it up to pH 10. You can see it added hydroxide there. We could test that, by the way, with the uh, pH solution. We can see that it's green, the little test tube paper or uh, pH paper over the test tube. And the solution's a little cloudy. I'm going to spin it. And uh, there we go. We have a precipitate down there showing that it was nickel. Now back to the other solution. Put this aside. Grab this again. Put it back here. Now we think this black precipitate is cobalt. We could see it here, but this is a known solution. If this were unknown, it wouldn't say that here. So we can test for that. Uh, we're going to heat it. And I'll look right there. Instantly, it's heated. And we see we have free cobalt. We have a pink solution here. That's the sign of cobalt 2+. Plus. Now that we've done some tests with the known solution, we're going to try a practice unknown, which is step four on your worksheet. Uh, the worksheet says to click on the unknowns label right here. But uh, that doesn't seem to work right away. Uh, you can see that the mouse is just a pointer. If this were an active option, it would turn into a hand symbol, the mouse pointer. What we need to do first to enable that is we're going to clear the lab out of all the uh, materials we put there by clicking on the red can. That makes everything disappear. Now the unknowns is activated. Now that I've clicked that, all of these options are activated again. So I'm going to click on the same ions as before, cobalt, copper, nickel. And over here, it says the worksheet uh, number four says to make a minimum of zero, which means the practice unknown might contain no ions, none of those three ions, just water, and a maximum of four, meaning that it could have uh, three, sorry, uh, meaning that it can have all three ions, or two of them, or one of them, or zero. And now I can click way up here, create unknown, and you may not have seen it, but this appeared right there, our practice unknown. I'm going to drag it over there, too, in a minute. Now it's active. Okay, drag it over to our blue test tube rack. By mousing over it, you can see it says practice unknown on it up here. And um, in the uh, blow up window, uh, it says unknown. It does not now tell us what's in there. We have to actually figure that out. I'll put the test tube in the stand so we actually do stuff to it. And uh, I like to divide it or we'll duplicate it. So I have something to work with in case I make a mistake. For the sake of time, I won't repeat all the procedures and tests I did earlier, although when you do the practice unknown, you can do it similarly, similarly to what I did earlier or use whatever qualitative analysis tests that you want. Whenever you're done with a qualitative test on your practice unknown, you can uh, check your results. The worksheet says to click on the lab book. So we'll do that. And on the left page, click the report button and check it out here. You can see up here, these are the three ions that could possibly be in the unknown solution. So select the ones that you think are in there. I didn't actually do the test, but I'm going to click all of them just to see what happens.
and I'm clicking Submit, and now we can see what happens. The green indicates that uh, I got those right. So those two were indeed present. The uh, red here, copper, shows that I got that wrong, meaning that copper was not there, but cobalt and nickel were. That's it, I'm done with that practice unknown. Now I can click the red waste can, clears everything out, and then maybe you saw over here, it magically made us another practice unknown that we can work with. You can try as many practice unknowns as you want, or until you get it right consistently. Finally, you can do your real unknowns. That's step six on your worksheet. Uh, I already cleared the lab, but you can uh, click there, everything goes away, and you are ready. Click on the clipboard, go to basic knowns and unknowns, and then transition metals to unknown. This time what appears over here, you can see it says unknown number 13. This is a real unknown. I'm going to drag that over here so it's ready for work. Don't forget to record uh, your unknown number. Uh, mine says unknown number 13 right here. Yours will probably be different than that. So do your tests and uh, report your results and your unknown number to your instructor. And that should be it.